Hello, welcome to the virtual college exploration for all Illinois students. Um, I want to take care of a little of housekeeping first. Uh, one of the questions is, how do I ask questions? Uh, you'll be using the Q&A button to type your questions to the presenters at any time. Um, you are muted and your video is off, so the panelists cannot uh, hear or see you. Uh, remember that you can sign up for more sessions. This is one of the many college presentations being offered, so check out the schedule at www iacac.org and this recording will be available afterward um, also at www.iacac.org um, and let me turn it over to uh, Beloit College. Well, hello everyone and good evening. Uh, we will introduce ourselves first uh, so that you know who is in the virtual room with you tonight and then we'll get started. Um, but my name is Emily McEntee. I'm the Associate Director of Admission here at Beloit. Hi, my name is Cherish Golden. I'm one of the admission counselors at Beloit. So I work with first year students and transfer students. Good evening, my name is Karen Smith and I'm actually physically located in the Chicago area and I have the great pleasure of managing our recruitment efforts at Beloit in um, several Midwest states, but I also get to work with a particular part of the Chicago area directly and also with the state of Minnesota. And to our person who's helping us from StriveScan, if you can please make it possible for Cherish to share her screen so that we can start to show our presentation, that would be great. So, the screen share now. And we're, just, we're gonna jump right in and then we'll leave some time at the end for Q&A. All right, so a little bit about what we're talking about tonight, you know, is going to be about the student body itself, some of the academics, student life, uh, the application process, and a little bit of the nitty gritty. But it's important to know that no matter what you decide to study at Beloit or get involved with at Beloit, all students come away with the four things you see on your screen in front of you. You're going to be a productive collaborator. You're going to be intellectually and professionally agile. You're going to be a creative problem solver and you're going to be an effective communicator. We see these as skills that all students need uh, in the job force or in graduate school programs and Beloit's going to give you the examples and the experience and build the skill sets within these with you so that you can speak to them in your life post Beloit. But a little bit about who is on campus that makes it so special? So we have 1,150 students on campus, truly coming from all over the nation and all over the world. So as you can see, there are 43 different states and over 40 countries represented at Beloit. So over half of our students come from 500 miles away or more. And that's important to know because that means that students are sticking around on campus on the weekends and they are really investing their time in Beloit's campus as their second home. You are going to interact with students who've grown up completely differently from you, had completely different life experiences, and it's going to enrich, you know, the interactions you have when you're passing someone in your residence hall, but also the classroom experience and everything that you're learning in a textbook. It's going to come to life with a little bit more authenticity because you're hearing from people. So because we are a small liberal arts college, we have small class sizes. So for us, the average class size is 15 students, but not all colleges of small classrooms look the same. So I like to give you a little bit of additional context. So 98% of our classes have 30 students or less. So truly that small classroom experience is gonna exist whether you're in an intro level course that's really popular or a STEM class with labs integrated during each of them, you're always going to be in a small community of students in that classroom. And our student faculty ratio is 10 to one. Uh, our faculty are here on Beloit's campus because they wanna interact with you. They wanna get to know your hopes and dreams. They wanna know what you're struggling with and they wanna see you 
really succeed throughout your four years. And keeping that ratio low allows them to do that and allows you to get to know them better too. So I would be remiss if I didn't I take a minute to brag about two real gems on our campus, which are our two teaching museums. So we have our Logan Museum of Anthropology and our Wright Museum of Art. So between both museums, we have over 400,000 pieces on campus, um, which obviously for our museum studies students is a fantastic resource and they get real hands on resume building experience all day, every day. But even if you think that what you're studying will never interact with your museum, we are here to prove you wrong. Um, you could be in a creative writing class and you are tasked with going to the museum to free write about a piece that you see or something that moves you. You could be in a science class and you're actually going into the museums and carbon dating some of what they have in storage. You could be a studio art major who during your senior year for your capstone project is actually putting up your own exhibit and learning about how to hang, what does lighting look like, temperature control, uh, and really getting kind of that 360 uh, degree experience within your major. So everyone gets to use them. So next, I'm going to be talking about Beloit, uh, the city, the community, and our surrounding areas. And then I'm going to jump into academics. So where is Beloit, Wisconsin? We're right at the bottom of the state. We're on the Wisconsin, Illinois state line. We're a small city of around 37,000 people. Um, the nice thing is that we're centrally located between three larger metropolitan areas. So we're an hour south, we're an hour south of Madison, Wisconsin, an hour and 15 away from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and then we're about 90 minutes away from Chicago. So while students do stay on campus and go into the city of Beloit, uh, whether that be for leisure or internships or other opportunities, they do have the accessibility to get to these larger cities as well. So the city of Beloit, um, again, around 37,000 people. Uh, we have a couple of staple events that take place in the city. So one that I always like to highlight is the Beloit International Film Festival. Uh, this is an event that has been in place for almost 20 years. Um, every year in February, they show hundreds of films in the downtown Beloit area. A couple of the local restaurants will serve as venues, and then the screenwriters for those films will typically show. Um, so it's really become a staple in the community. And we do have some, some of the students that have participated and have just attended the event. Um, also, the campus is about a five minute walk from downtown Beloit. Um, downtown Beloit has changed a lot in the last few years, so there's a lot of new restaurants and businesses down there. Um, the city of Beloit has a minor league baseball team called the Snappers, so a new stadium for them is currently being built in downtown Beloit. So when our students are staying in the city, they usually gravitate towards the downtown area. We're also home to a couple of key companies, um, Carry Ingredients, ABC Supply Company, Fairbanks Morse, Regal Beloit and the Beloit Health System. So these are all companies that students have had internships at and some have even started permanent jobs at these places after graduation. We also have an award winning farmers market that runs from May until the end of October. We have our Rock River with a Buccaneer Boathouse. Um, and again, uh, we do have an amazing foodie scene and that is because of a lot of the new restaurants in downtown Beloit. Um, and then a lot of local family restaurants as well. 174 years of red brick brilliance. What this means is that Beloit College is Wisconsin's oldest continuously operated college. Um, we're the oldest in the state. If you ever have the chance to visit campus in person, um, you will see that the majority of the buildings do have historical preservation. Um, and we're also located in, in the historic East District of Beloit. So moving into academics, I'll be discussing majors and minors, experiential learning, and then support for our students. Some of our most popular majors at Beloit are anthropology, biochemistry, creative writing, economics, education and youth studies, and psychology. Over one third of students choose to double major. Um, so if you ever get here and you're torn between two areas, major in both of them. 
the students that are double majoring, they're still graduating on time and they're gaining expertise in multiple fields. Experiential learning. We want students to be gaining experiences outside of the classroom, um, taking what they've learned and expanding it into field work. This is gonna help them with putting um, experience on their resumes, help them with connections, help with networking, whether that be going into the job market after graduation or going on to graduate school. So these are a couple of the ways you can get this experience. One is the liberal arts and practice requirement. So no matter what you're majoring in at Beloit, every student is required to do some type of field work. Um, so whether that's an internship or a project or volunteer work or a capstone project, you are doing something and connecting practical based experiences with what you've learned in the classroom. There's also opportunities for study abroad. Now, typically between 35 and 40% of our students do participate in study abroad. Um, if that's something you are interested in, you're going to want to speak with our Office of International Education and they can help you get that set up. Um, we have students go all over the world, uh, many different countries and continents. Um, typically, where you go will depend on your major or minor, but you can make a proposal to go uh, study abroad in a place that's outside of your area of study. There's also opportunity for research with professors. Um, and then we have CELEB, which is our Center for Entrepreneurship and Liberal Education at Beloit. So this is a neat little building that's technically off campus. It is in downtown Beloit. Um, it doesn't matter what your major is, that building is accessible to everyone. They have a couple of cool components within it. Um, they have Maple Tree Studios. So if you're interested in recording and mixing music, you can do that. We have Gallery ABBA. So some of our art students will create art shows. They might, um, they might display their art for sale. We have our Makers Lab. So if you have a business venture and you wanna get hands-on experience and actually make your product, you can do that there. And then we also have our Beloit Access Television Station. So if you're interested in film and media and just any type of production of that, some, of that sort, then you're able to do that. And then last, we have our Career and Community Engagement Center. This is the department on campus where students go um, to help them get set up with those off-campus experiences, those internships, that field work. Um, they help with resume writing. They have a nice car share program. So if you have a field placement and you're worried about getting to and from there, they do have this car share option that students can use on a first come, first serve basis. And then support for our students. So once you get to Beloit, we wanna to continue to make sure that you're getting the support and resources you need to remain successful. Um, so some of our departments include Learning Enrichment and Disability Services, also referred to as LEADS. So for any students that need accommodations, whether that's for housing or in the classroom or with dining, uh, this is the department that they would work with. Um, they also provide tutoring through this department. We also have our writing center on campus. But Beloit is a very writing intensive institution. So students do three writing classes for graduation. Um, for those students where writing might not be a strong area, they can go here and they can get help. They can get their essays edited and reviewed to make sure they're doing their best. Um, and then again, we have the Office of International Education. This is, a this is the department where students go if they wanna get set up for study abroad. Um, and this is also the office that supports our international students. To the right hand side, some of this student programming is through the Office of Student Success, Equity and Community. So these programs are really focusing on helping students from historically underrepresented populations. So first generation, low income, if you have a documented disability, if you're a minority, um, or if you're part of the LGBTQ community. So we do have two TRIO programs on campus. We have our Student Excellence in Leadership program, and then we have McNair Scholars. So for the Student Excellence in Leadership program, also known as CEL, this is a program that students are invited to apply for after they've decided they're coming to Beloit. Um, you have to meet certain criteria to be eligible. If you apply and get admitted, it starts off with a summer bridge program. So you move to campus before everyone else, and it's a week of connecting with everyone and learning about resources on campus. And then it turns into a four year program of support. We also have WISCAMP, which is a program for underrepresented students interested in STEM fields. 
So science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. We have peer support groups, and then McNair Scholars is a research program. So this is for underrepresented students that will be interested in going on to graduate school, um, going on to get masters or PhDs or other doctoral or terminal degrees. All right, so next we're gonna chat a little bit about student life and what it's like to live on campus, but it wouldn't be uh, fair if we didn't show you those pictures of what it looks like to go to a Midwestern college, because it's not always the summertime here. Um, and the first thing I wanna start with, because it's what I get most excited about, is the powerhouse, which is the newest building that we added to campus in the spring. But it's not just a building, right? It's 120,000 square feet of, of recreation space, athletics, a new place to eat on campus, a movie theater, uh, indoor turf house. You can see a glimpse of the new pool, the swimming and diving back there. Um, space to plug in and play video games or pool or ping pong. So it's a student union, but it has so much to do while you're there that no matter what you're interested in, you'll find a space or probably three that you like to spend your time in. Uh, and our health and wellness center actually relocated over there too. So you can think of it as a building that really takes care of like mind, body, soul, um, everything that you need when you're a student. And this is a picture of the powerhouse from the outside too. So this is right along the banks of the Rock River. Uh, beautiful views from the windows, also the rooftop too. You couldn't get closer to the river if you tried. Um, I did mention the Health and Wellness Center, um, but I do also want to add that all of our counseling services are free and unlimited for our students. So making an appointment is really as seamless as calling and booking one, uh, and they're there to help you. Uh, dining services. Uh, our on-campus catering provider is Bon Appetit. Fantastic. They focus a lot on um, farm to fork, so locally sourced food. They also work really well with dietary restrictions. So if you have anything that you want to talk to dining services about at a school like Beloit, you can actually tell us that now, even before you've chosen, because maybe it's really important to you to know that you're gonna be able to have many options to eat when you get to a college campus. And these are offices that are willing to talk to you even when you're just deciding if you want to apply too. Uh, as far as residential life goes, we have 32 different living options on campus. So we have everything from your traditional residence hall to suites and apartments and townhomes. And we have these really neat things called special interest houses. So housing based around a theme. You could live in art house, music house, feminist collective, anthropology house. Uh, and so that way you can dive a little bit deeper into areas that you're interested or passionate about or you can use it as an excuse to meet new people that have the same interests as you do too. Um, but if you don't wanna to commit to living with a bunch of people with the same interests, that's where student engagement and leadership comes in. So they manage all of the clubs and organizations on campus. Um, and we have over 50 clubs and orgs. So there's probably something that will fit what you're looking for there. Um, and then they also take care of some of the bigger programming on campus. So in fall, traditionally, we do Folk and Blues, which is a big concert weekend. In spring, we do spring day where we cancel classes for a day, bring a bunch of fun games and music to campus um, to give you a little bit of a stress reliever. And they do a lot more than just that. If you are, if you'd like to be athletic and active, but maybe being a varsity athlete isn't for you, um, clubs and intramurals are a fantastic opportunity. Uh, they change every semester, so there might be something that piques your interest, and then you have an excuse to try something new the next, uh, but they're a really great way uh, to get involved on campus. Uh, and then all students have the ability to work on campus and you can choose to have those, have those funds paid directly toward you as a paycheck or pay them toward your tuition bill. Um, and these are jobs with a purpose to build a resume to give you a skill set. So any employment that you have on Boyd's campus is not just going to be for a paycheck, but it's to get you to that next step in where you want to be or to build a skill that you've been um, really itching to. 
It's also one of the best ways to make friends. I will just say that. You get to meet people outside of your major and outside of your residence hall. So keep that in mind anywhere you go. Um, but if you're wondering, hey, does that place have athletics? We proudly do. We're a division three school with 18 varsity teams. Uh, so we are the Blake College Buccaneers and you can see all the teams that we have listed on the screen. If you are even, you know, remotely interested in being a varsity athlete, reach out and learn more about the program. The coaches want to talk to you. The current players will tell you about the team culture and what they do. Uh, and you can go to the athletics website, navigate toward the sport you're interested in, and they have recruitment forms that you can fill out to get in touch with the coach or the team. So it has been quite a year and the year isn't even over. So when COVID first hit in the spring, Beloit recognized that we cannot continue to operate and pretend this isn't happening. So we developed what's called the Beloit Action Plan. And this is in response to everything that was changing and the recognition that things were gonna continue to change, but that we need to put students at the forefront of every decision that we make and make sure what we're doing is for their benefit. And we did that by breaking it out into five parts. And the first one are mods uh, or modules. Uh, that's what it's short for. And what this did was break the traditional semester down into two different modules. Students are completing two courses during each mod. And by the end of both mods, so by the end of a typical semester, they'll have completed the same amount of coursework, but it'll be more focused and it will be in segments, which makes it easier to consume while there's a lot of other things happening within the world right now. And then the next would be the advanced mentoring program. And because everything in college has an acronym, you might hear us refer to this as AMP from time to time. Uh, what the advanced mentoring program do, does is it connects enrolling students to an advisor within 72 hours of enrolling at Beloit and it introduces them to a two-year support system that offers specialized courses, small advisory group, and personalized guidance for your first two years. Uh, so it's kind of your first connection and your first buddy at Beloit uh, that makes sure that you're transitioning well. And then they also help guide you to the other resources that we have on campus. And the next big one would be the career channels that we're offering. Uh, and this is where students are able to find mentors, suggested courses, internships, field experiences, and expertly curated connections between what you're majoring in and what you're interested in and areas of industry. So to make that all a little bit more tangible for you, um, we have one channel, it's called Health and Healing. Perfect if you know I wanna be an orthopedic surgeon and that's exactly what I wanna do with the rest of my life, great. This is going to give you resources to help educate you on how to be a ethically responsible healthcare provider. Um, it's going to show you other areas of medicine just to make sure that that's what you might want to focus on later. Um, and it's going to connect you to a professional network so you can start to talk about what that postgraduate life looks like in medical school programs. And then on the flip side, it helps with, uh, I know I want to do something within health, but I don't know exactly what career I want that's okay. This is your channel to swim in and explore and find what fits you best while you're with us. And then the last piece, uh, the second to last piece is our Midwest flagship match. Um, so I'm particularly excited to talk to you all about this, um, given that most of you are probably from the Midwest. So this is our guarantee that if you're admitted to Blake College, we will match the in-state tuition for your public flagship institution. So for those of you in Illinois, that would be U of I Urbana-Champaign. And uh, we do that because a lot of you after this year might wanna stay close to home. Uh, and just because you wanna stay closer to home doesn't mean that you should have to give up on a highly personalized individual education that's gonna help you explore what you want in more depth while in a small campus community. Um, so this just helps with the transparency of showing you small liberal arts colleges do become affordable and you don't have to wait to at least see what we're not going to exceed for you. And then we have our Bloit Promise. And this is our ongoing promise to students that the college is investing in them and putting them at the front of all of the decisions. 
So this one manifests in different ways. In the spring, this meant us promising our students that we wouldn't raise the cost of tuition for this, uh, for this academic year. So that in a time of real economic uncertainty, students knew that um, they wouldn't be seeing a higher bill than they're used to from Beloit. Uh, and then the most recent iteration was that for students who enrolled this fall, uh, they have the option of a free ninth and 10th semester so that they can kind of reclaim a little bit more of their traditional college experience and have the opportunity to go further in depth on what they're passionate about and be able to maybe do some more projects than they would have had time for in their four years. So I'm gonna wrap up the presentation and talk about next steps. So I'll go through the application process, affordability, um, some statistics from senior classes, and then our contact information, and then we'll leave it open for Q&A. So our applications are open right now. Um, we're on two different platforms. We have an application through our website called the Beloit app, and we're also on the Common app. Uh, we don't have an application fee for either site, and we don't have a preference for whichever one you use. Um, some of our requirements include your current high school transcript, a secondary school report, and a one teacher recommendation. Um, so the high school transcript and the secondary school report, your counselor will submit these items. So whether you're applying through the Beloit app or the Common app, there will be a section to list your counselor and they'll get direct links to send these materials along. For the teacher recommendation, we do prefer that it come from someone that taught you in your junior year. Um, you can certainly have more than one recommendation, but we only require one. Um, and then also we're test optional. So what this means is that we don't require you to submit an ACT or the SAT. Um, now, while a lot of colleges have gone test optional because of the pandemic, Beloit College has been test optional for a few years now. Um, so since we are test optional, we really focus a lot on your transcript, uh, the rigor of your coursework, trends with your GPA, um, how you do in the course subject areas. We pay attention to your writing, your activities, what your teachers um, and coaches and mentors are saying about you. So in in short, we take a holistic approach when we review you and your application. We currently have four rounds. We have early decision, which is binding. So students apply under this round if they know Beloit College is the place for them. Um, if a student is admitted under early decision, they do have to withdraw their applications from any other institution they've applied to. We also have two early action rounds. We have early action one, uh, which has a November 1st deadline, and we have Early Action 2, which has a December 1st deadline. These are for students that want a decision earlier, but don't want to necessarily commit. They might be looking at other options and just want to see what's most realistic and best for them. And then we have a regular decision round, and that deadline is January 15th. So with Early Action 1 and Early Action 2, um, you're going to receive a decision about a month after you've applied, and then about two weeks later, you'll get a financial aid offer. And then with regular decision, those decisions come out on a rolling basis. Affordability. So Beloit College was currently ranked number two in the nation for financial aid. And this was a statistic from linu.com. So our sticker price right now is around 65,000. Um, although that's a large sticker price, our merit aid scholarships currently go up to 36,000 a year. Uh, these main merit aid scholarships are awarded based on your application. So there's nothing additional you have to fulfill. So when a student gets admitted to Beloit in their admit letter, they do get to know the name of the scholarship they received and what that amount is. We also have three additional scholarships that can go up to 5,000 per year. Um, this does require either separate application or some additional documentation. Um, and you can be eligible for one of the main scholarships and one of the additional ones for a total of up to 41,000. So the three additional ones are a music scholarship if you sing or play an instrument, there's one if you've done study abroad in high school, and there's one if you're a national merit finalist. Um, and then as Emily had mentioned earlier, we do have campus employment that goes up to 2,000 per year. Um, so this is typically in the form of work study. And as she had said earlier, you can either have your earnings applied towards your bill or you can have that come back to you personally. 
So after all of this aid, our average cost of attendance ends up being around $19,818. So graduating with confidence. Um, these are some statistics that were taken from the senior class, um, and we really feel it drives home the value of the Lloyd degree. Um, what students are going to do after graduation and how their education and experiences at Beloit have really provided a foundation and prepared them for success. So 85% of seniors had a mentor that encouraged them to pursue their dreams. 94% were working six months after graduation and 20% were in graduate school six months after graduation. Um, so no matter if you wanna go into the job force or go on to graduate school, or just make a lifelong connection with someone, you will have that, those opportunities at Beloit College. And then this is the contact information. There's four of us counselors that kind of handle the state of Illinois um, and some other regions as well. Um, so that's all of our contact information. If you'd like to take a picture real quick with your phone, um, if not, you can always find this information on the Contact Us webpage. Um, under admissions at Beloit.edu. So we have about 15 minutes left and we would like to open it up for Q&A. If you have questions, please feel free, feel free to type them into the Q&A uh, box and we'll be happy to answer them. We do have a few students who have asked some questions and so I'm gonna turn them over to Emily and Cherish to respond to. The first question, which is so pertinent, um, what do things look like on campus right now? Are students back? Are classes in session? How is this working? Um, if you could kind of give us a status report of, of what that looks like, that would be great. Yeah, so we do have some students back on campus. Um, we are really working with students and their comfort levels. So students who felt comfortable coming back to campus were able to. We are also offering online courses, virtual courses for those who wanted or um, weren't able to make it to campus. We do have a large international population um, who weren't able to make it. And we wanna make sure that everyone feels as involved as possible. And being that um, some things have had to look more virtual too, a lot of most clubs and organizations are all meeting uh, through Zoom or kind of other ways <laughs> too. So even if students are off campus, they're still able to participate in clubs and organizations and bond with all of their friends. Um, there are tents on campus for outside classes um, and different just like small nooks and crannies that they've been able to carve out for out outdoor classes. The weather has been gorgeous lately, which has helped with that a lot too. Um, Cherish, anything you wanna add? Yeah, um, I would say for those that are on campus, um, we're really taking precautions and making sure that everyone stays uh, safe and healthy. Um, so any student um, and any staff member and faculty member that wanted to be on campus, they had to show proof of a negative COVID test. Um, as much as possible, Residence Life tried to place students in single rooms unless they specifically requested a roommate. Um, two of our staff members were trained on contact tracing through John Hopkins, so they've been doing that. Um, Beloit College has partnered with a lab in Chicago to offer routine COVID tests for free for students. Um, so we've really been taking some really extreme and nice measures to make sure that we're able to stay on campus. Um, and I think part of the reason we were able to do that is because we're a smaller institution and we have small enough numbers where we can manage that. Um, and as you had said, the transparency about everything has really been helpful. Right. And so the other thing that I would add to that actually is something that's very unique to Beloit um, is that our students were very involved in crafting the Back to Beloit statement of culture. And so instead of being a place like so many others where the administration was telling the students and the community how we would transition back to college. It's our students that we're telling each other how we would transition back to Beloit. Um, I've heard references to the NBA, right, who have been incredibly successful in, in playing their season within a bubble and talking about our campus being our own bubble and protecting our bubble. And, and so I think when you have students talking to students about the importance of taking care of each other it has a very different tone than what you're seeing on many college campuses. Q 
Catherine has a question about what can I do to make myself appealing to Beloit as a student? So I'll, I'll just jump in and say, I think what you can do to make yourself most appealing is don't try to be appealing. And that's counterintuitive. But really, we want you to be yourself through this process. Because if you are presenting you for who you are, you're going to be accepted by colleges who genuinely want you, um, who see you thriving on their campuses. And that's ultimately where you're going to be happier. So I would say to really make sure that you're using your essay as a place to exercise your voice, your perspective, um, but don't worry about what we want to hear because really what we want to hear is who you are, what you're looking to do, what scares you, what excites you, all of that good stuff. But yeah, just be you. Yeah, and we just add to that, um, the student body at Beloit is very diverse. We have very eclectic students with a wide range of interest and involvement. Um, so yeah, just being your authentic self. Um, we've seen it all. We want to see what makes you unique. Uh, we don't have a cookie cutter type of student body. Um, so yeah, don't worry about, oh, I haven't done this, or maybe I did that too much. Just really highlighting um, what makes you you, um, what you've done in your school and in your community, um, your different interests. So yeah, I would agree that the essay is a great place to highlight all of that. We have another question. Cherish, maybe you can take this one. Um, Ming is asking, please provide additional details about support for students who have learning issues related to writing. Yeah, so... Um, Again, with the Writing Center, um, that is um, one of the areas where a student can get assistance with that. Um, if it's anything really specific, again, that's where um, the Leeds Department would come in. Um, so Angie Olson um, or some of her coordinators within that department would be good people to chat with. Um, and then even if you're in a class, our faculty, they get to know students on a first name basis. Um, they have office hours. They're always willing to meet with students one-on-one -on -one and just kind of help them and work through their situations. So you will have multiple avenues where you can get that support so you can be successful in that particular area. We have another question. We have a chatty group tonight. Um, can you talk, and Cherish, I know you're from the city of Beloit, and, and Emily, you've lived in Beloit for a time now. We have a student who's curious to know a little bit about the relationship between Beloit College and the city of Beloit. Yes, so um, I was born and raised in Beloit, Wisconsin, so it's my hometown. Um, I always love to speak about the city and the surrounding area. Um, the relationship between campus and the community is getting better. So as Emily was mentioning, the powerhouse earlier, um, when that had first opened, that was open to the community. They kind of made restrictions now with COVID. Um, but once that's gone away and things have gone back to normal, they will open that back up. Um, students have done field work in the city. So, for example, students in education and youth studies, um, they might do their student teaching with the school district of Beloit, which is our K through 12 system. Um, some of the business students, they might go across the river into that whole ironworks community. Um, so that's just an area of the city that has a lot of tech and business and startup companies. Um, the security office on campus, they have a really good working relationship with the city of Beloit Police Department, which is about five minutes away from campus. So that's in the downtown area. Um, so making sure that the students are staying held, are safe on campus. Um, we have had community members come to campus for events. Um, sometimes local churches have catered events for the Black Student Union. Um, so yes, there's been a lot of inner, there's been a lot of inner community and building between campus and the community. And I, th I think a lot of that happens because, you know, we're the oldest college in the state of Wisconsin. We're actually older than the state of Wisconsin. The college has been around just as long as Beloit has. So we've grown up together. 
And so you have local businesses that are so excited when school starts back up because you all get to go work at the restaurants or hang out in the coffee shops. Um, and then the residents also get excited because then events happen. Like any of you who are fans of The Moth, they did a taping on campus and that was really popular with City of Boyd residents who all flocked to campus. So it's, it's a campus where the community is welcome to step on and you feel just as welcome to step off too. Great, thank you. Um, Emily, can you talk a little bit about off-campus study kind of pre-COVID? Yeah, yeah. So pre-COVID, um, about 40% of our students would do some sort of off-campus study. And we say off-campus because we do send students out of the country to different universities um, abroad, but we also do have a few domestic programs that students participate in. Um, one being with the Newberry Library in Chicago, and then we also have a program out in Washington, D.C., which is really popular with our political science and international relations students. Um, but as Cherish mentioned, you can pick a program based on your major. Um, maybe you know that that one university in Australia is really well known for psychology, so you want to take some obscure classes and go there. Fantastic. Um, maybe you just have a deep appreciation for the German culture, and so that's where you want to go, and you can take your classes um, here and there. So you find an ease with um, transferring courses back and forth because you work so heavily with the Office for International Education. Um, and most programs are at no additional cost to Beloit. And it's actually a fun website to navigate. I mean, fun in quotes, because you can look at filters for your um, off-campus study in terms of maybe you even want to save some money. What well, programs are $1,000 less than Beloit, $2,000 less, five, and go through it that way too, just so that you're making sure you're not taking on a financial burden um, to really have a new perspective. Great. We have time for just a couple more questions. Um, we have a student who's asking, what if I'm undecided? And the first thing I will do is to point out that at Beloit College, we don't really refer to students as undecided. Uh, we refer to you as multi-interested because indeed most of you are not totally undecided, but you actually have multiple interests that you'd like to pursue in college on your way towards whatever you're gonna do at the end. But if, if Cherish and, and Emily, if you could talk a little bit about multi-interested students and how we work with them when they're, they're coming to us. Yeah, so um, a student can remain undeclared for up to two years at Beloit. Um, so in the meantime, you could be taking courses that kind of gauge those interests. Um, so expanding on what you're already interested in or maybe picking up a new interest. Um, and then also having that count towards graduation. So Beloit has really unique um, gen ed requirements. Um, so the way I describe it is we don't have specific classes that have to be taken, but, but specific areas that have to be fulfilled. Um, so you might be taking a class in anthropology that could count towards quantitative reasoning. You might be taking a ballet class that could count towards arts. Um, so you really have a wide choice. Um, I almost refer to it as a la carte choosing these courses. Um, so yes, you will have that opportunity to explore and it's encouraged. Yeah, and just keep in mind that your college search might look different, but in a good way. You know, no matter where you end up, you're going to have great, fantastic academic programs to choose from. So you get to focus more on school culture. You know, how do students support students? How do students get along with each other? What kind of things can you do outside of the classroom? Uh, because you might not just be looking at you know, what are, the, what, what are the intricacies of your biology program? And that actually frees you up to pay attention to other parts of the college search that might lead to you being happy somewhere too. So it can, it can actually be a real big pro when you're trying to narrow it down. So we have one final question, um, which I'm so thrilled. Uh, Izzy asked, we are planning a trip to Beloit, yay. Will, will we be able to walk around campus this fall? So not only will you be able to walk around campus, but you actually can schedule an official visit through our office. We are um, welcoming students to campus for visits one family at a time. Um, and so you will be able to come, you can schedule this via our website. 
you will be, you and your family, if you bring some of your family members with you, will be the only people involved in that particular visit. You can take an official tour of the campus. You can meet with one of us, um, an admission counselor. If you are a varsity athlete or someone interested in athletics, we can usually make arrangements for you to meet with a coach. And then we are doing our very best to schedule some uh, professor appointments as well, faculty appointments. Many of them will take place after your visit virtually. The one thing that I would remind you of is if you come on your own, that's fine. Um, but our students and our community have um, put into play the fact that we are requiring individuals on our campus to be masked, to wear a mask, both in buildings as well as outside. And so whereas in, in many parts of the Chicago area in particular, families can be outside without masks, again, we feel it's important to protect our bubble as, as much as we can. And so you will be asked and you'll see signs posted everywhere um, to wear a mask during the time that you're on campus. But we'd be thrilled to have you come. Um, you can schedule that via our website. If it doesn't work out for you for whatever reason, we do have virtual tours um, available as well. So yeah. Uh, Cherish, Emily, Dawn, and I are all actively virtually visiting high schools. Um, we may be coming to your high school and we'd love to meet with you there if you're interested in that. We also, all of us have regular appointments, Zoom appointments. Um, where we are happy to meet with students and families individually and, and learn a little bit more about you and address your particular questions. Um, and I think that's it. Any last words, my friends? Oh, just thank you for spending your evening with us. Yeah. Yes, thank you for attending. Exactly. Um, I think that all of you will be sent a quick survey uh, at the end of this appointment. Um, and I know that StriveScan, who's, who's running these sessions, would appreciate the comments that you have to offer. Um, Emily, maybe you can quickly or Cherish put up our contact information for students to see again. All of this information is also available on our website. Um, we wish you the very, very best of luck with your college search. We're happy to help in any way that we can. Um, and we all wish we were in the same room with you right now talking to you face to face, but we're going to be fine. We're going to be fine. Thank you very much.